Okay, in this video what we're going to do is look at uh, a few of the basic terms related to uh, genetic information uh, that is associated with meiosis as well as an overview of the two basic forms of uh, reproduction that occur. Right now, this video, or I'm sorry, this uh, image is helpful because what it does is it gives you an idea of the relationship between DNA and chromosomes. If you look at the DNA molecule, it will begin to coil back on itself and uh, a protein called histone and continue to uh, supercoil uh, to where it condenses into the more recognizable chromosome. So we know that a chromosome is basically supercoiled DNA and uh, its associated proteins. Now, uh, a particular section of uh, a chromosome that imparts the directions for the production of uh, a single protein is what we refer to as a gene. So a gene is simply a segment of DNA. So let's uh, jot this down here. So a gene is a segment of DNA associated with the production of a specific protein or enzyme. So we would say that um, a gene only codes for one specific uh, protein. So uh, a protein is made by uh, genes that are associated with uh, the instructions needed to assemble the uh, amino acids uh, that will ultimately lead to the three-dimensional structure of the protein. So again, just a segment of uh, a DNA molecule or a portion of a chromosome is what we refer to as a gene. Now, the particular location of a gene is called its locus. So, uh, locus is the specific location on a chromosome for a, a gene. So you may have, uh, say, a gene for eye color uh, located at one particular locus. Uh, you'd see you can have uh, an enzyme associated with the breakdown of sugars at another locus. Uh, you, know, you can have a, a third gene associated with some other uh, protein, it could be any protein uh, located at a third locus. So again, when we refer to a locus or loci for plural, um, we're talking about the location of that gene on uh, the chromosome. Now, an another important note is that an allele is a form of a gene. So, uh, certainly there's not uh, just one form of any particular gene. You could have different genes uh, that code for slightly different proteins that ultimately have uh, different traits. Uh, so, for instance, you can have uh, an allele that imparts one particular uh, protein that influences eye color in one way uh, and another allele or another form of that gene that codes for uh, the production of a slightly different protein uh, that creates or helps create uh, a different shade of color uh, for an individual's eyes. So, alleles are different forms of a gene uh, located at different loci uh, along the length of a chromosome. And again, a gene codes for the production of just one uh, particular uh, protein. Now if we look at the growth structure of uh, this chromosome, please recall that a chromosome is made of two sister chromatids. So these are two identical copies of the same segment of DNA. So uh, we could say that during G1, uh, you have uh, one particular copy of this genetic information, but after S phase of interphase, uh, that information has been copied. So now we have two uh, replicate chromosomes uh, held together uh, at the central location, uh, the waste being referred to as uh, the centromere. So hopefully this is just a review from some of the stuff uh, we've looked at earlier. Now each 
chromosome can contain between uh, a few hundred uh, to up to a few thousand genes. The one exception being the Y chromosome, the dinky little chromosome that males have. Uh, it can have, uh, I think, uh, fewer than a hundred genes on it. So uh, most genes carry between uh, a few hundred and, uh, or several hundred and a few thousand uh, genes uh, on them, coding for, again, uh, various proteins associated with our traits. Now, uh, if we move on here, let's look at uh, the different form, two basic forms of reproduction. So, uh, the main idea is that an organism is going to produce offspring. And this can occur one of two basic ways. Uh, you can start off with a process uh, in which one parent Uh, goes through the process of creating an identical offspring. Uh, now, this particular form of reproduction is asexual reproduction. So the hallmark of asexual reproduction is that one parent uh, imparts its genetic information on a single offspring, or I guess it could be multiple offspring, but a, a genetically identical offspring that is referred to as a clone. So a nod to Star Wars fans. Uh, the other form of reproduction uh, takes two parents. So we can say parent A and uh, parent, uh, let's see, let me do this differently. We could have, let's say, parent A uh, producing an egg, and parent B produces a sperm. So here we have gametes that are produced. Let's list it here. Uh, gametes that are created. And those gametes then uh, combine through the process of sexual reproduction to create a unique offspring. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, um, please remember that offspring are going to be a unique combination of characteristics of their parents and that mutation or change in DNA can ultimately lead to uh, new traits that can uh, as well be imparted uh, in offspring. So to review, uh, offspring receive genes from their parents uh, through either asexual reproduction that produces uh, identical clones or through the passage of genes through sexual reproduction resulting in a union of gametes or egg and sperm here that create uh, unique offspring. Uh, also a sexual reproduction, uh, again make note that chromosomes are found in the nucleus and that genes are used to uh, assemble proteins.